Hey everyone, Ben here and this week I've been reminded of a really valuable lesson that could guarantee you great sim racing results regardless of your underlying speed. And in this video I'm going to give you 5 tips to help you turn this lesson into action. Now I've been running the F3 at the Red Bull Ring on iRacing quite extensively this week as it's a combination I love. The circuit is fast and flowing and the downforce of the F3 cars means you can really push through its turns. It's fair to say though that despite consistently qualifying in the top 6 of grids with a strength of field ranging from 1.3k to 1.8k, I've had some mixed results. My first race of the week was essentially over at T1 after this shunt. I did manage to bring my damaged car back through the field to finish in 4th, but largely because over 10 other drivers crashed out. But I've also put in what I consider to be one of my best ever sim racing performances this week. And it was not because my raw speed blew everybody away, it was because I was more consistent. I mean, just look at these lap times across a 19 lap race. And this was enough to finish ahead of a number of other drivers who were each capable of quicker one lap pace than I was and secure myself a podium in the process. And I think you can achieve similar success if you focus on the following five things. Number one, know your ideal race pace and don't try to find new pace in the race. What is your ideal race pace? Well I'd advise anyone going into any kind of race to understand the quickest lap times you can run safely over and over again. Not your hot lapping speed, not your qualifying speed, not a lap which causes you to take massive risks where you're holding onto the car for dear life, but the pace which you can repeat and feel in control. Going into this race I was clear that my ideal race pace would be in the high 126s and that at a push I could realistically pull off a 126.3. And so it proved. But I crucially didn't let the fact that the two drivers in first and second were quicker than me force me into trying to find brand new time in a race scenario. If I'd done that then it's overwhelmingly likely I'd have pushed too hard, gone over my limit and ended up in the barrier. And that's because of number two, the importance of being clear on braking points, gear shifts and turn-ins, and sticking to them. A race situation is no time to explore how the car behaves if you brake 20 metres later, downshift a bit earlier, or turn in at a different marker. Sure, you might find some time, or you could just as easily end up off track and out of the race. If you're not satisfied by your speed and you want to experiment more, well that's what practice sessions are for. And practice will also help you get on top of number three, understanding the car and track. My ideal race pace is built on me knowing how my car is going to behave in different corners of the circuit. I'll give you two examples. Heading into T1, I know that the quicker line is to open the corner as much as you can, running over the rumble strip and curbing. But it's bumpy out there and it can unsettle the car. So I actively choose to give away a bit of time in exchange for stability through the corner. Equally I know that in the F3 car I can use the brake pedal to help rotate the car through some of the fourth gear corners at the Red Bull Ring. Just look at how the rear of the car begins to step out when I apply a bit of brake, helping me to get through the corner, on the gas earlier and maintain a decent minimum corner speed. Invest the time to understand these kinds of characteristics and you'll be in a position to judge how hard to push and where to push on race day. Before we get on to the next point, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please do hit the like button to ensure YouTube shares it with more sim racers who might benefit from it too. And then there's the mental side of the race, including number four, not focusing on the deltas to the drivers ahead and behind. Now this is tough to do, you want that race information up on screen because in other circumstances it will help you. But in a situation like this where I had a 4 second gap ahead and behind, it can only harm me to focus on what those drivers are doing rather than my own race pace. Keep your eyes on the track ahead, spot your braking points and turn ins and try to forget about other drivers unless they're running much closer to you on track. And finally, number five, we all make mistakes, 
My run at the Red Bull Ring was far from perfect. One lap in particular, I gave away a few tenths, and the temptation to try and find that time back immediately was very strong. But if you do that, you're guaranteed to push harder than your ideal race pace, and you're putting your whole race at risk. Instead, if you find you've made a mistake, focus on making it the only one of the lap, and getting back to consistency on the next one. If you chase the few tenths that you've lost, the chances are you're only going to lose even more time. But what about if you're struggling to even get through lap one? Well, you're going to want to watch the next video up on screen.